Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. On today's program, you will experience a powerful right now word that will change your life forever. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth as Perry ministers using biblical word studies, ancient Jewish history, and Hebrew customs that will cause the scriptures to come alive as never before. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. On Manifest today, we're going to do something very special. We're at a place that we've never taped before. As a matter of fact, if you've been watching our programs for quite some time from Israel, you will discover that we have been taping in places that we have never gone before. We specifically wanted to do that for two purposes. One is for the the group, our partners that are here during a very special partners pre-tour and for the main tour that's coming. And the second reason is because I believe there's many important places that we've never shown you before. And today on the program, I want you to stay with me because riding over here on the bus, the Lord gave me a word to share with you. Now, I love that kind. You know what I mean? I mean, look, let me just tell you this, a little secret. I'm come here and talk to my partners for a minute here. I spent about a month working on 30 messages. We have already taped 12 programs, and I've only used two of those. I mean, it's like, Lord, you could have just told me, just come on the trip and just forget it, okay? You could have saved me a lot of, you know, uh, anyway. But I want to show you something because we're in Joppa. Now, those of you that have read the Bible know a little bit about the name Joppa. But I'm going to show you a story that happened here, and if you, you, I, I'll tell you this. I'll guarantee you most of you have never seen this before. How many of you like to learn something? You folks at home always tell me we love the program because we're going to learn. Let's go to the story of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against her, for the wickedness has come up before the Lord. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. Now, why did he come here to Joppa? Because Joppa was a great port city back in his day. And the Lord is telling him to go to a city called Nineveh. Now, Nineveh, you, you know, if you go up uh, into the Mediterranean area, you go up into Lebanon, you go up into the area of Iraq, you'll discover that Nineveh was actually the northern part of Iraq today where our troops are. Uh, some of the areas where the Kurds live is actually where uh, that was. Let me ask you something. It doesn't really tell you other than Jonah was running from the presence of God. Why is the man not wanting to go warn these people? Why is he not wanting to preach to them and warn them that God's going to destroy their city if they don't repent? Number one, he's Jewish, and this is a Gentile city. And back in that day, and even in the time of Christ, there were religious Jews that had no dealings with Gentiles. That's point one. Point two is, Nineveh is exceedingly wicked, and I honestly believe Jonah had the attitude like, kill them, who cares? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's people in America, I hate to say it, that's Christians that are almost that way. They'll name a city. I just wish the whole thing would just die. You know what? If a lot of people die in a tragedy suddenly, they're going to die lost. I don't want that to happen. But Jonah was prejudiced. A lot of scholars believe that. But here's another reason. You never thought about this till I was driving up here. Check this out. From where he lived in Israel, if he were to walk to Nineveh, which is what he would be required to do. You remember he got in a boat to go the other way. He wasn't going in a boat to go to Nineveh. Are you with me? Did you catch that? He, wa he got in a boat to run. It would He would have been out of loop at home for six months. It would have taken him days and days and days to get there, days and days to, to come back. And some scholars estimate by the time he got there, by the time he preached, by the time he did everything he was going to do, he could have been gone up to three months just in the journey and coming back. So this guy says, look, I don't like the people. <laughs> Go ahead and kill them, God. And if you're going to make me do this, I'll just show you what I do. So he gets in the boat, and you know the story, the sea. Now look at this beautiful sea behind me, how beautiful it is. I have been here, and our camera people can verify this, some of our partners can, when this, the wind was blowing on this, there were waves that were 15 and 20 feet high. It was unbearable. The wind was so strong, I promise you, I was moving into the wind like this and going forward, and the wind was holding me up. Now imagine being on a ship and the wind being that way, but this is the sea that Jonah got on. We call it the Mediterranean. It was called the Sea of Joppa back in that day because where the port was located, I should say. Gets in a boat. Now, you know the story. I'm not going to go through all the story because I want, to, I want to make a prophetic point here in a moment. So he gets on the boat, and it says that the men on the boat start praying all every man to his God, which, in, which tells me they're not Hebrews. They're people from other nations, and they're praying to their idol gods. Finally, Jonah, <laughs> he is asleep, bottom of the boat, wakes up, comes up and says, Guys, it's my fault. If you'll get rid of me, then you know, your, your storm will end. Sometimes you've got to throw Jonah's off your boat. 
<laughs> Sometimes you've got to disconnect with people. It's caught to cut, watch this, to make the storms stop in your life. You really do. There are people that create storms and create trouble. And we're not talking about go out there and divorce somebody you don't love anyway. We're talking about there are, there are relationships that you get into with people that pull you into drugs, pull you into alcohol, pull you into a lifestyle you don't want. And sometimes, man, you're just going to have to break, the, you're just gonna have to break it, throw, throw Jonah off the boat, so to speak. Now watch what happens. This is the part that really impressed me driving over here. They took up Jonah and set him into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. Then the men, now this is the men on the boat who just a few, you know, what, minutes or hours before, they're praying to their idol gods. Watch them. They're all, they're all converted. The men, the men then feared the Lord exceedingly, offered a sacrifice to the Lord, and made vows. I read this and started laughing on the bus just a moment ago because I said, look how funny this is with God. He won't go to Nineveh to preach repentance to a group of heathen, but he gets on a boat with a bunch of heathen, okay? Then he gets on the boat with a bunch of heathen, and what is so funny is because the storm came because of Jonah, and the storm ended when they threw Jonah off, and Jonah had told them the story of God calling him, right? Guess what happens? The whole boat gets saved, and Jonah's in the bottom of the sea. Jonah didn't even preach. Jonah, Jonah didn't even tell him to repent. You know what God was saying? I can do this with her if that's you, boy. Watch out. Come on. I, you know. God, God was really saying to him, I don't really need you because I can create circumstances to make a whole boat of heathen men repent and turn to me. Now, do you remember reading in your Bible where Jesus made the say, statement about the sign of the Son of Man is the sign of Jonah? Remember that verse? They were wanting a sign from Jesus, and he said, you're not going to get any sign except the sign of the prophet Jonah. As he was three days and nights in the belly of the fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and nights in the heart of the earth. Now, I want to, I want to drive up a point right there. I want to hold on to that verse of Scripture for just a moment. Now, let me take you to Acts chapter 10. You're going to love this when you see it. Ready? There is a man in Joppa named Simon Peter. Wait a minute. Sina's, Simon's surname is... Simon Bar-Jonah. Yes. Simon, the son of Jonah. Watch. A Jonah was in Joppa in the Old Testament. A Simon Bar-Jonah was in Joppa in the New Testament. Jonah is on the seashore. Peter, according to Scripture, is on a deck overlooking the sea. Simon, Jonah, is sleeping in the boat, and Simon, bar Jonah, son of Jonah, has gotten weary on a rooftop, and he goes into a trance. And here is what is fascinating. Jonah, in the Old Testament, refused to go to Nineveh because of a prejudice that he had against those people and didn't care what God did with them. Simon Peter, on the other hand, is Jewish. And back in Simon's day, if you'll study Jewish history, the Jews didn't believe the Gentiles could have a covenant with God. God was about to bring a man by the name of Cornelius and his entire house into covenant with him, but he had to have a man to go preach the gospel to Cornelius, who was in Caesarea, where we're going for lunch, by the way. But look, don't get hungry yet. <laughs> we're going to go to Caesarea for lunch, which is 45 minutes from here, up north, all right? So... Look at, look, at, look at how phenomenal God is. Jonah would not go, and Peter didn't want to go. Why didn't Peter want to go? Because, because they were Gentiles. He said, Lord, you're telling me to go to an Italian man's house and preach the gospel when he's unclean? And that's where God previously had given him the vision of a sheet with four corners. Now, the King James translation will translate that as a sheet with four corners. Now, some of the Jewish uh, messianic groups believe that God actually showed him a Jewish tallit. And you have the seat seats on the four corners, and it was lowered with these animals that are speaking of animals, a dog is just walking by. What how what a prop, what a prop to use while I'm talking about animals, you know, on a sheet. There he goes. He, he, he just wants to be on television, I think. <laughs> that is hilarious. It's what happens when you're taping live, you know? And what hap what happened was, where was I at by the way? I just that dog just threw me off. The Talit, okay. It happened. 